What that means is that you're technically a member of the group, and you can post on comments, you can uh, post events, post. Are you ready to go? Yes, I'm ready to go. I'm stuck for a distracting. So this is quite an audience here. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Yay! It's like a lot of people excited about Fusion. My name's Solomon. I'm a Drupal themer. I do some back in development too. I'm gonna go over the whole Fusion system and some grid layout techniques. What are you guys using right now for your yeah. team? Uh, Zen. Fusion or Zen. Fusion or Zen. Okay, I got a lot of Zen lovers. Garland. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so what, the difference between, well, first of all, I'll explain a theme framework. A theme framework is you a bunch of base code to work with to build a sub-theme off of for all your customizations. You don't have to keep reinventing the wheel, which makes development very, very fast and really, really efficient. Um, a lot of you are using Zen, and you're probably familiar with the grid system. I'll go over that in a second. But the main differences between Zen and Fusion is Fusion is integrated in with Skinner, allows you to have reusable really CSS files and classes, which can go for real blocks or panels, which is super efficient. It has um, built-in Succubus drop-down menus, which is pretty nice. Um, and lots of other features we're going to get into today. When would you not want to use Fusion? Before showing all the good things about it, I like to try to see what people think of why you would not want to use the Fusion framework and why would you not want to use Fusion? A lot of it heavy nodes. Hmm? Heavy on the Not too bad, but correct. If you want to make the minimalist thing you possibly could, um, so you had a one-page thing with very little in it, it's probably going to to build up from scratch. But, but there's other ways to performance optimize. The footprint of Fusion isn't too bad. It's also not source order. Hmm. Also not source order. You, you, could, you could fix that in your sub if you wanted to. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> One of the biggest advantages of Fusion, and also the reason why you wouldn't want to use it, is Fusion absolutely enforces the grid-based layout. Every single thing is defined in your database by the grid. So every, and I'll show you this in a second. Every block, every element is in so many grid squares, and it uses the same amount of gutters. What's cool about that is it makes your design you can very fast, rapid prototyping, very clean layout. Um, but yeah, it absolutely enforces a grid, and you're, and you're defined in the database. Grid elements for each of your blocks and every other element. Are you guys familiar with the grid? A nine yeah. Six Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. What a grid system is, is instead of just having like free form elements of any type of size, it divides up the page into equal portions. And I'll show you. Um, let's overlay the new Drupal redesign. Is on a 12 column, 960 pixel static grid. So take a look at this. Uh, this is the browser tool, it's for free. It's called the 960 Gridder, it's pretty cool. Um, if you want to get used to seeing grids on websites, I'd recommend you take a look at it. It'll actually show you all the gutter spaces, and you can look at the columns and see how they divide it up. You'll notice that all of these elements fit pretty perfectly within this grid. And this will be a gutter, and this will be the size of the columns. The most commonly used grids are 12 and 16 columns. This is a 12 column static grid with 10 pixel gutters. Uh, fixed. Fixed grid. Fluid, yes. Yes. Fusion supports a 12 or 16 column fluid grid. I'm not going to get into the exact CSS of that, but yes. And, and you can define your own grid. So really, you can make any type of fluid grid using any gutter size and any column size you want. And I'll show you where you can do that. So the cool thing about grids is everything's nice and neat. Um, it makes designing really fast. You have less questions. It's kind of like, OK, I have this element. How many, how many grid um, columns do I want to take up? And you can dynamically change that, which we'll go over in a second. So some of the biggest sites on the web are using a 960 grid. So when you first install Fusion, let me open up a uh, blank site.
This is running on the Acrea stack. It is Drupal 6, but um, I can show you a demo of Drupal 7. There's only a few changes, which I'll go over to. You'll just put in sites all your themes directory. It comes with Fusion Core, Fusion Starter, and Fusion Lite. Fusion Core <laughs> contains all of the it's the, it's the theme framework. It contains all of the, the stuff that your sub-themes will inherit. It's a, a template file with preprocess functions, all your TPLs. And it comes with two starter themes for you to start with that you can retheme, and you get to choose which one you want. The only difference between the two is Starter Lite has uh, less regions and less stuff pre-filled in for you, but I think it's more valuable for me to start with Fusion Starter. So go into Themes, and you choose... Let's go right into the admin to do this. Drupal stack's a little little slow on a Windows laptop. It's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I've also got Devel and Themer turned on. Are you guys familiar with Devel and Themer? Identifies All right. Okay, so here's some default themes. You enable and you can turn on Fusion Core right away even before you do anything else. And you can see that looks pretty basic and ugly when you start off with it. <laughs> oh, so, so the way you get started off with a custom Fusion theme is you make a copy of Fusion Starter or and stick it in your themes folder and you're going to rename it and you can open up the info file. Before I get into that, I think it might be valuable to go through some of the features, if you guys haven't played around with Fusion yet, of uh, regular Fusion Core. So you're going to create a new Fusion-based theme for us right now? Yes. You can do that? Yeah. But just by copying it? Yeah, you copy the starter, rename the stuff, and then you just jump right in and start writing your free process functions. And really fast. That's great. <laughs> all right. So right now we're in Fusion Core. You've seen this before, normal stuff and all your features. There's a few things in here that are pretty cool that you may not um, realize are right here. Check this out. Right from here I can choose my grid. And remember I can define a custom grid and we'll go into that in a little while. So I can pick 16 column fi fixed grid 960 is the theme default or 12 column fixed grid 960. If you're new to theming or want something really simple or basic, Use a 12 column fixed grid. That's column the less you have to be dealing with. Uh, so let's go 12 column fixed grid. Um, you, you can go fluid too and then adjust the, the percentage. Can you be changed later in the case? Absolutely, on the fly. It reads a bunch of the theme settings directly from new tables to the database. Um, so it's very quick. You can change it on the fly, rearrange it all you want. Is any of it uh, Yes. So for example, all of your Skinner settings can be exported and imported in. What about the Fusion settings? Like, storing the fact that my layout is 16 grid in my database is not ideal. Is there a way around that? Um, these give you options. You can specify defaults hard coded in your info file and then not specify these. Okay. And so it'll read the defaults directly like any other thing. But for the purpose of this, I might as well just. Mess around and show you so, so uh, <coughs> if you're looking for efficiency and you don't want to change it, like you've got, you might want to do that. In fact, you should do that. Your default should be what you want. You don't have to set anything. But, improve um, performance. Sure. Windows 7 base? <laughs> 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 All right. 
Well, we picked our grid. We can pick split sidebars, both sidebars first, last sidebars. This is where it becomes interesting. Um, you pick the size of your sidebar right here, and everything's in grid units. So if I change the size of the grid, this automatically recalculates all these pixels for me. So I never have to do any math. And, uh, and even if I set up a custom grid, it would be like strange, like 186 or like 194. It'll, it'll do that for me, which is pretty sweet. Um, we're going to go with two units on the left and four units on the right. Typography, change the font family, font size. This is your base default. Again, you can set the theme defaults automatically. This is, I'm just changing this because it allows for Enable primary memories drop down. It's automatically integrated with Superfish. Are you guys familiar with Suckerfish? Old school JavaScript drop down. Superfish is like a better version of that than even jQuery. And uh, it's very uh, nice. Okay. Even in IE6, it'll just it'll render a CSS only. And there's a bunch of built in features of that. We can uh, add a file to set that I'll go over hopefully by time. Cooling up Fusion is automatic templates for all your search results. So you can start cleaning the way search results look very quickly. It also has an automatic template for the search form. One of the most common things I always get asked to do is make the search form different. Um, so you write like a pre process function to change the title or change the length of the search field. Uh, this comes already with a nice template set up for you. You can make your own, but it has that feature in there. <coughs> and you can already change what displays on the search results, username. Has configure links for administrators. Less important, but there. When you're developing, you can rebuild the theme registry every single time, which would not want on a production site. It'd be incredibly slow, but it, it can be nice instead of a clear, clear cache and theme registry on every single page. But I'll go ahead and turn that on. And you can avoid the IE style sheet limit. Some of you might know this, but if you run a lot of modules, it'll a module will patch down style sheets. You can run software to put those together and, and compact them to speed it up, which you should do. But if you don't, you can run into ice style sheet limits where everything looks awesome in Firefox, it's awesome in Chrome, you go right to Internet Explorer, and you're like, what happened? Um, just check this box while you're developing your own question. Yes. Have you ever used the IE CSS Optimizer? The one that, that avoids the limit with the module? Yeah. Yes, I have. It does the exact same thing. As far as like efficiency, which one is better for performance? I'd have to actually open up the code and look at it to tell you what methods they're using. I haven't. I don't have that on the top of my head. If we have extra time, I would. I, I could open it up and look at it. Okay. So now we've changed the default font size and the, the sidebar changed. And you've got a few different options right here. Um, I should show you what Skinner comes with out of the box if you guys haven't used it before. It's very cool. So here's all the regions built into Fusion. It's got tons of regions, which makes it nice. You can eliminate the ones you don't want, or start with Fusion, start with Light, which has less regions. You got header, preface, top, preface, bottom, sidebar first, sidebar last, content top, content bottom, postscript top, lots and lots of regions. Which is great, you can work really fast um, to get some stuff up, and then you can eliminate the ones you don't want. Or you can leave it like this. So, where's some blocks we have? Got this navigation block here. Let's say we want to put that in the uh, header. And I'll save it. Now I've got the navigation block up here. I'll configure it. You guys have all seen these, these screens before, but if you haven't used Fusion and Skinner, there's going to be some new options now that you're not used to. Alright, so I can, I can set the width of this block to any type of grid unit I want. I'm actually okay with it taking up the whole thing because I'm going to make a... a but I'll do 9. Uh, we're not in 16. You can eliminate the unwanted ones, by the way. I'll show you that in our sub theme. We'll make that take 100% block position. 
First demonstration, I'll make it take half. Block position, I'll float it to the right. Content alignment, I'll make it right aligned. You wouldn't want to do this for a real thing. But. So these styles, um, you don't have to write your own. These are like Skinner styles. You can write your own or modify the ones already there. Um, this is going to have links. They have menu styles. So instead of having the menu drop down, I can make it single line menu with separators, which is pretty cool. Um, How many of you have had to do that by hand? Do your CSS collapse? Yeah. It takes a very long time compared to this. You can write a whole bunch of your own skinners, do all kinds of stuff, and then it's super fast. You can start <coughs> doing views and, okay, I'll stack these five styles. Okay, uh, vertical menu for sidebar blocks. So we could, we could activate super fish here. I won't for this particular thing. Advanced options. I could specify a class that would bump it over to the right or to the left by one grid unit. Notice that I have my alignments were float left, center, or float right. What do you want to have a float left? But you have a background image there, like something else. Um, let's look, background image. So you want to move it over just a little bit. You can bump it right here. And there's already classes written for you using the grid. Um, this even replaces the module called block class, right? Where you can just Correct. Yes. Actually, um, an old module called Block Theme what was what um, inspired the developer for Skinner. And you can even have templates. So you can have separate block templates that you could use too. Are those pop up in your skin? Or you from your skin? The templates? The, the, the templates, I have to look it up. Okay. I know you can define them. Typically, I still do the templates manually if I want to get that specific. I write like a bunch of CSS and I'll okay, this type of block. Um, but, but it should. Okay, so we have all this going on. Let's save that. Now we're going to have a weird looking menu. Yeah, see? Pretty cool. Right up here. Going to the right, just like we said, and uh, change the style. The more Skinner styles you have that you import in, the more stuff you can set up really fast. Awesome for prototyping. You guys know, like rapid prototyping? You want your client gives you a, a down payment on something and wants like the proof of concept it doesn't have to work all the way. Usually you don't want to go really slow and make a whole bunch of PSD mockups because then you won't really get it out fast. But you can't like show them Garland or they're gonna like puke and be like, what the hell is that? Um, Fusion's really cool for that. Because you can throw something up and put everything in the right spot and get it to float and have it really, really, really fast once you are set up for it. Okay, so now we have these menus up here. Um, so I showed you the basic settings. Let's go into what's actually inside Fusion. Let's start with Fusion Core. Okay. These are all the TPLs it comes with. You'll see a theme form, a search result. Search result's cool. It's cool that they have all those like options where you can hide stuff directly really fast in the search results page. And then of course you can modify all these in your <coughs> own custom theme. I want to show you. We're going to view code and go into some other stuff too if I have time. I want to go through the template.php file. Default TPL for views. Panels. Look at the info file. So you copy these templates and put them in your um, in your uh, sub theme. Um, yes, except for template.php. Template.php, you create a blank file and put whatever you want in it, and it'll run that on in addition to what's in the core. Um, you can do overrides. If you if you want to override the functions that are included for it. Similar to the other theme frameworks, they have the templates and the core parent theme. Yes, you copy them over. Yep, exactly. So, okay, a good example would be if I wanted to retheme the search form, I would just copy this and we'd stick it in Fusion Starter. We'd have to rename this. You don't want to leave it default and put it in the right spot. But yeah, I just copy it in and go right to work. We should set up our own grid and, uh, and make a sub theme. Um, let me give you a really fast tour of the code. So we'll go through some of the stuff. Where are we in? 
Here's the .info file. It's using the, the engine PHP template. Probably almost all of you are using it. Unless you're doing something very custom or... Um, Drupal actually supports other template engines, but PHP templates by far the most popular one. Okay, so style sheets, it brings in style, topography, superfish, these are those drop down menus. That's probably all I didn't already know how to set up your own .info files, but if not, um, you can set up all the JavaScript you want to bring in. These are the ones that come with by default. There's your superfish. It has some hover and temp positions, so it's easier to like. It has all this available to you, so you don't have to reinvent it. There's all your regions. There's the features. There's all the default theme settings. 960, fluid. And here's some Skinner classes. These are the ones it comes with. The ones I showed you before. So with, select one unit. Lock positioning. Um, I should explain these more. I'll explain these more on the sub thing. This is actually like giving you options, but it's really calling this. And you can put these in your CSS files. So you can make your own. You can add as many as you want right in your um, .info file. And then it'll be available to what you give it. I'm in the core, so I'm not going to explain all this code yet. I just want to give you a tour. Of, I want to go through a bunch of stuff so you really get a tour of what's in here. Lots of Skinner styles. This is interesting, and a lot of people that use Fusion I've seen don't mess with this. Um, there's a lot of options you can set in the Superfish menu without having to do a bunch of manual code. Um, I'll show you one I did with icons and rounded corners and slower animation and all that stuff. Okay, and there's the information about the packing script. So we're done with the info file. So, how many of you check out what's in your template.php? Okay, a lot of developers here. Designers. These are the functions that are, that are available that they've written in. Um, a lot of them rewrite or overwrite or override what's the variables or what's being printed out from the core. So, if you wanted to like, change the search form, um, you could write a few process function to do that. Or use a template file and it'll look for that. So let's see what's in the Fusion Core template.php file. Not all of this is that interesting, setting up the grids and stuff, but I just wanted to, since we're giving the presentation, go through it all. This is what adds the classes to the Superfish menu. What's cool about using Fusion or any other theme framework, everything's well commented, so it tells you exactly what it's doing. If you want to find out what's happening or get really customized, you can. You'll notice it sets a zebra class. Zebra class is where you can have like odd and even two different colors. A lot of time I've built lots of things from scratch and use Zen. Um things from scratch I always have to add all the zebra classes and stuff if they want that in the design. This makes it handy for for you. So you can just use those. And then the username and that's um, um, a lot of grid stuff. <coughs> and that's it. It's a little beefy, but not, not too bad for the, the functionality you get um, built in. If you look at any of the other TPLs for Fusion, they're well commented and have all kinds of cool snippets right there, which can speed up some stuff. You can look in the Drupal API or Drupal.org and find your own. But here's the default... Um, search that TPL PHP for Fusion for the search form. And this is already set up for you, so it's really easy to change the max length, the words that are in the search box by default. All you do is copy this into your sub-theme and start adjusting stuff. Up here they have tips for changing to advanced search. It's 
use. Okay. I want to go too crazy with this. Let's go to. The home page. And let's inspect our link. So here's what the outputted code looks like. You have a body, you have lots of body classes. So you can get at if it's the front page, if if it's if the user's logged in or not, um, what type of node it is, and whether or not it has sidebars. This is pretty handy. It allows you to really, really, um, without writing your own functions, change how stuff looks. So you can have it look different on any of these things. Or just any element by using this class because it's a body class that so affects this whole page. Um, on the outside, how many are familiar with the skip to main content technique? This right here. Skip to main content accessibility technique. Uh, I don't know about any of you. Okay. I think believe this is also in in Zen. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. For screen readers, sure. screen reader, so it's more accessible because uh, it doesn't know where your main content is. It, it will, but it's fixed in HTML5 because they have new semantic markup that says, "Hey, this is the article. This is the navigation." In HTML4, which is pretty much every Drupal theme right now, and what's supported by IE, there are HTML5 Drupal themes, and you could make an HTML5 sub theme fusion. So actually, I had one of the questions on the group thing was about that. It's not hard to do. All you have to do is change the document type declaration, add the bare minimum semantic markup, and you're good. So they don't have to release an HTML5 version of Fusion right away. If you want to create one, just over just change the document type declaration, add those elements, and you're good to go. It's HTML5. Um, I should I should maybe release the release of something that does that just for a contribution, just to play around. Because I'm yeah. I'm doing some development on I have to learn HTML5 in case it's clean. Uh, for a couple projects at a high level, so I'm doing some development on that. Okay, so we've got these great body classes. I love having body classes, it gives me a lot of flexibility. Underneath that, we have skip to main content, so that allows the screen readers, so people that are blind, immediately get that link and then they can jump right into your content area. Done for you. If you're using Theme Framework doesn't have this, you should probably add it for accessibility. Um, everything inside Fusion is, uses a wrapper. ID and N has classes on top of it. Um, there's tons and tons of classes, so it's, it's really easy to write uh, CSS that doesn't um, that inherits the way you want to. You don't run into things overwriting itself that you don't want. So we got a wrapper class inside every wrapper that 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 gives it the size and the float or where you want to put it. Inside that is the inner. So you see like wrappers and inners. I can see main the main inner. You'll see main inner here. Um, you use the inner classes to give yourself padding or other like elements there. You don't want to give padding or margins to the wrapper element. Hmm? Ten minutes? Damn. That went very fast. Um, there's a lot of stuff I could show. How about I open it up to questions? You guys have any questions? You want to talk about anything? What what's what what gets you excited about fusion? What's the status of 7? 7, uh, Fusion has a stable release for 7 right now. Skinner, on the other hand, um, still has some bugs, but they'll, they'll have a fix pretty quickly. You can use Fusion right now with 7 and don't run Skinner on a production site. If you can get your Skinner classes already within a month, I bet they'll be ready. But it does commit every day. Or the commit yesterday. Specifically about Skinner that I ran across when I was using it on the site, it, it won't drill all the way down to actual nodes, right? It will, it will allow you to style a content type, but not if, say, my my user wants to define a set of LIs to use a specific node. I would have to do that via the WYSIWYG or some other type of class definition that I can them, versus using Skinner and it's If you want to go all the way down to the specific node, you mean like an individual node? Yeah. Like node 479. Yeah. Can say that. Um, if you had a giant collection, it, 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 I, I hand say that would be the way to do that. If you only have one specific thing, if you have a whole bunch of different connected nodes, 
You have to find some way that they're that, that let's say you had a shared taxonomy term or shared something else, you might be able to apply across the back. That will then style all of them, but if it's just one, you wouldn't get any benefit adding extra overhead by trying to use stackable means of class. Yes. What do you do if you have different page layouts? Like if you have one column that's three digits, one column on another page that's four or five digits. No problem. It it you would create multiple page dot tpl dot php. The multiple page templates, and then it defines the you can define the columns differently in each one, um, especially with blocks. <laughs> using blocks, say you want to do one to use block content or view content, we'll just use blocks now. Say you want to do block content, you can change the, the blocks all style separately, so you can have different size blocks that that we that dynamically resize the sidebars based on the page that you build up. There is a there there you could imagine scenarios where. You're gonna have to write a little bit of custom code to fix, but any theme template, you know, framework is gonna require that if you get really, really fancy. Which is why some you get, you know, why fingers don't have a lot of work. Yeah. Do you, how do you get the content into the scenario? You have to use blocks or blocks. Um, it supports panels. It supports blocks. Um, well. You can still use everything you normally use. What are you using? Are you using views? You can write your content, you can content, you can search results. It's the same. It's just this is the thing that wraps around it. Skinner classes. A Skinner class can, can go to views. So you can <coughs> use all your Skinner classes on different view content, which is pretty nice. I don't, I don't know if you've ever had to, like, like a list of blocks you want to have change your CSS for, a list of views, and a list of this. You can start separating like types of displays. So like, okay, I know we're using this type of grid, so we want templates having around these types of elements. So you can create something for that, or create a list file that is based on something like that, and then start stacking them up. It's kind of hard to explain out that really specific example to make it make more sense visually, but we're out of time. I have a lot more stuff. Could yeah. you maybe post some links on the event page or groups.org, like just any references that you find to help people see some sure. scenarios? Yeah. What's the status of, of Skinner settings and features mod the features module compatibility? Um, I have to I have to look that up. I know the features module I've used it. Um, everyone uses it. It's awesome. Who likes to use it? Um, it, it should it be has, fine. Yeah, it has it's like it has Skinner settings. Skinner settings Strava. Strong reference. It's got it like serialized. Yeah. Right. It has built-in exportables, so if you guys are using features, that, that's great. Great, you can use that. So you can just export all your settings and import them. Obviously, if you have like, they have 20 modules you want to do that for, exportables, and then you have a little stuff that you can do you want to just as features. But if you're just trying to move it quickly to one side, you can use an exportable. That's good to know um, for that. Features are great. How many of you are using features? I don't know. Yeah, not nearly enough. Come on, everybody. Next time around, I want to see more hands. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. All right. Solomon, thank you. Yay. Yeah. Can you send me a theme or uh, post a theme somewhere as a, a zip file? I'll post it, attach it to tonight's event announcement. Sure. I've um, we've made multiple custom theme things, and we've worked on some other stuff. So I can post some pretty cool examples. You can override. They even have like a lot of customization. Very nice. And then on the other side, uh, Fusion, since you can modify all stuff really well, you can do more with contributor themes. Normally, like regular like uh, themes off Drupal.org, normally they're not that valuable to us because even if we're just prototyping something, it's not going to work quickly. If they're coded badly or they have like a big mess, like they're gonna spend so much time even just getting it to like change the layout. The cool thing about Fusion is it's all stackable, so certain contribute things like Oc if you want to just mess around with Fusion and don't want to start from a scratch thing, download Opera and Arena. It's freaking awesome. To start with, you mess around with it and get through this. Uh, that's probably why it's like I think it's the most popular contributing thing. Is that right? Outside of like the one that it ships with. I might be wrong. Yeah. Both of those are fusion themes. They were 
They're in the active institution. He's prosperous. Aqua uses Fusion, so Fusion's not going anywhere. They had a webinar where the, the people that were working on Fusion gave it and explained it. So, they're in Fusion. It's pretty cool and not going away. Thank you. Did you get one of these? Um, what's that in here? Oops. Did you get one of the fucking passes? Oh, um, I got a meter. Good, 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 good. All right.